I hope you're not tired of so many 16-inch MacBook Pro videos, but this type of design changes don't happen every day. It's not just a MacBook upgrade, it's also Apple going backward and responding to what a lot of people were asking for, so haven't quite had it for a full 24 hours yet, but my initial impressions for this big boy is very, very good. Much better than I thought it was gonna be, so I thought I would encapsulate them into a containable container that is YouTube, a website I built yesterday, and will display it on to all of your displays now. You're welcome. Let's begin. So as you guys probably saw in my unboxing yesterday, my first impressions are that with this display, despite it only being just a little bit larger than the 15 inch MacBook Pro, it for some reason made a substantial gargantuan difference with viewing content. Maybe it's because I'm so used to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Maybe some of you didn't know that, but this has been my MacBook Pro for about the past year, almost a year now. And it's good, it's from 2017. I haven't really filmed many videos on it because I've already, in in the past talked about 13 inch macbook pros and ever since the redesign back in 2016 it's mostly just been cpu boost there better butterfly keyboard there oh no that broke too another better butter oh that one broke too and then it sounds like the 2019 versions are for the most part working but for basic stuff i kind of use this as a designated overpriced over the top chromebook except with safari safari book there's a laptop idea apple give that a shot but i don't really do much heavy intensive tasks occasionally i'll do some light editing on here here. never really tech videos typically just vlogs and that kind of thing but it's so light it's so thin it doesn't weigh very much very easy to throw in a bag so maybe it's because i've gotten used to this so easily that as soon as you switch up to the 16 inch macbook pro which by the way is the largest mobile display apple has launched in about eight years i think it might be longer since the last time they launched a macbook pro over 15 inches but if you consider that there's no other like battery powered display out there that apple has launched recently almost an entire decade this thing just makes such a large difference for viewing content even though I get it you know like physically it doesn't look that much different from the 15 inch I hope my big head doesn't diminish the fact that this thing is an enormous laptop and I also wanted to bring up my first experience with the magic keyboard as well so I never really had major issues with the butterfly keyboard though I completely admit a lot of people did and I feel like it was very interesting to see Apple actually go backwards in design it feels like they never do that and I even made a video about this several months ago suggesting that Apple just adopt the magic keyboard again because no one really seems to hate it that much but there does seem to be a very present demographic of people that hate the butterfly keys and while I was not one of them finally moving back to it on this machine I noticed there was like another level of, of peace of like content with reality because while I do have the butterfly keyboard on the 13 inch MacBook Pro and I've been using it for over a year I've never had any sticky keys that's never been an issue for me because because so many other people have, so many others out there have complained and said their keyboards went out, I noticed that anytime I used the 13 inch MacBook Pro, that was in the back of my head and I was kind of like constantly thinking, you know, I hope it doesn't happen today. Is this key okay? Or sometimes, you know, when you just forget to press a key on the keyboard and you look at the sentence you just typed and you're like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. <gasps> Has my butterfly keyboard failed me? How dare you, Tim Cook? But then you just go back and realize, no, wait, the key's working fine. I'm just an idiot. I forgot to type the word correctly. I would kind of have that constant fear in the back of my mind that it was about to fail or it was about to stop working that is completely gone on this because it's just like the Magic Keyboard that I use with my iMac Pro. It's very dirty. I'm not going to show you what it looks like. That moving over to this, I feel like there wasn't a different experience. You know, they say it's a Magic Keyboard and it is. Really, the only difference between previous gen Magic Keyboards and this one is the backlit technology, which, you know, is, is good for when it's dark and stuff like that. But the fact that they're also quieter helps Helps. I mean, it feels like the butterfly keyboard can be louder depending on how much pressure you're applying. But with these, even when you're pressing pretty hard, I feel like they're way quieter than before. And I can definitely think of a ton of friends and family that despise the butterfly keyboard that I'm sure they're going to be very happy if they decide to upgrade to the 16 inch and finally get the regular traditional magic keyboard. Speakers also completely blew me away. If you couldn't tell from my unboxing yesterday, very, very crisp and surprisingly low bass for something this thin that watching content 
content on this was an absolute delight. And the microphones, after using them in a FaceTime call, we just recorded the next Talos of Tech podcast right before shooting this. And I had AirPods in, so they heard regular AirPods microphone for a while. And then I switched over to the MacBook Pro microphone. They didn't notice a difference. So if you're expecting some clear or FaceTime call quality, it's still a laptop microphone. I mean, Apple may claim studio microphone. And I know I've seen several YouTubers record videos off of the microphones on the MacBook Pro. And you know what? I've heard them and thought, you know, this audio doesn't sound too great. You know, I'm sure it's an improvement over the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Yes, the microphones are good, particularly when you have to hold them really close to your mouth and record this way, but no one's gonna do that. Anyone using the laptop is gonna have to, you know, use it at an average distance. So did Apple hype up the laptop quality microphone a little bit? Yeah, I wouldn't say studio quality. You're still gonna want a designated microphone, but an improvement nonetheless, I'll, I'll take it if I can get it, especially given something I don't think enough people are mentioning about this MacBook Pro, the average price actually decreased. While you may be confused and think, well, Drew, it still starts at $2,400, so the price didn't decrease. What are you talking about, you absolute moronic, stupid ginger who doesn't have a soul? Why were you born and put on this earth? Well, don't worry, I get that a lot. But if you consider the upgraded options, because a lot of people don't get the base model MacBook Pros, a lot of people upgrade the RAM, the storage, or the CPUs, or GPUs, or whatever, and they've actually lowered the upgraded prices pretty significantly compared to the past. With the 15 inch MacBook Pro, if you maxed it out, which by the way, did not grant you 64 gigs of RAM or eight terabytes storage, but even maxing out the old MacBook Pro, it would get you well over $7,000. Whereas now maxing out this MacBook Pro with vastly better specs across the board, you max it out at just a little over $6,000 before tax, of course, and those prices will vary depending on your area or your country. But the important thing to remember is that if you take the price of all the different configurations and find the average, it actually overall went lower, even though the starting price is 2400 But keep in mind, you're still getting more with that same price point because this is the base model I bought here and it ships with 512 gigs of SSD now. Whereas before you would get a base storage of 256 gigs. So same price as before, but doubled the storage plus more stable keyboard, bigger display, better GPU standard, better CPU standard. I've done some light editing on this as well as throwing on some light games and cranking up the settings all the way, this thing has been handling them like a champ. Probably because of the Intel Xeon chip, which is not gaming friendly on my iMac Pro, but Fortnite, which I'm not a fan of, by the way. Fortnite's bad, I get it. But I played it on the MacBook Pro just to see how the performance would be, given that was Apple's, you know, direct comparison on their website and everything. It actually ran noticeably better than my iMac Pro, which was weird and bizarre. And I'm actually editing this video on this MacBook Pro, so I will insert myself in just a second to tell you how it's editing so far. Smooth as butter, no stuttering, no lag whatsoever, and the fans are pretty quiet. Also, there's a bomb. You need to get out of the house quickly before it's too late. I'm already dead. Thank you for the update, future Drew. But day one impressions, if there's anything you want to take away, is that despite me kind of downplaying the MacBook Pro a lot and saying, ah, it's not going to be that great, us seeing the leaked images and saying the design isn't that cool and the keyboard is actually going to be butterflies, I am immensely surprised with what they did. And I'm very happy that there's improved cooling systems in here as well. So many YouTubers that love to bash Apple are now liking the MacBook Pro and thank you Apple for just listening. You don't do that a lot, but when you do, we really appreciate it very much so. Not to mention the differences between the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro now. So much, there's so many differences between the two that I imagine the 13 inch MacBook Pro is probably not gonna sell as well as it has been. Also rest in peace to all of you who bought a 15 inch MacBook Pro a month or two ago. That sucks and I feel bad for you because you could have just waited a little bit longer, but Apple and their weird MacBook refreshes. Not that I'm unhappy with this refresh, it's just the fact that they updated the 15 inch MacBook Pro just a few months ago just feels kind of like cheating. And I feel bad for you if you just bought one, but let me know what you guys think of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you got one or if you're considering getting one, performance is uh, pretty impressive in the first 24 hours. So feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or join our Discord if you want to agree with me over there. If you want to disagree with me, then well, you can just go to the same places and I'd love to have a healthy conversation with you and we can continue our friendship. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.